Welcome to Alton Park and welcome to mixed weather for this opening round of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. Glorious sunshine on Saturday for qualifying. We've had dry, we've had heavy rain already this morning. It has stopped raining now. The road is damp but drying fast as the cars are released. And the first fascination going into the opening 60 minute race is who's going to do what in terms of tyres. David Addison and Joe Osborne trackside. Joe, it's a great grid, but let's get this weather out of the way because the teams are terrible out their hair trying to work out what the best option of Pirelli tyre is. Yeah, we had heavy rain 30 minutes ago, but suddenly the sun's coming, it's drying quick. So the guys are going to the grid, they're going to be telling the teams what tyres they want. There's not going to be the right choice, but there's definitely going to be some wrong choices. That's how it feels <laughs> right now. Fast forward to the pit window, and we'll touch on this again, I'm sure, no doubt. But normally you would get your AM driver, and it's the AM that starts in this race, into the pits as soon as you possibly can to put the pro in. Well, it might be in this race that the teams have to keep their AM out for longer so that they make one pit stop. And if they need to do a tyre change, it's the right change. They don't want to have to bring the driver in at the start of the window. If it's the wrong tyre choice, bring him in again, because then that's game over. So it's going to be a really interesting uh, strategic gamble, not only in what the drivers do, but what the teams do. Yeah, completely. And as a driver, you'd want a really strong engineer, the guy calling the tactics to kind of guide you through that. But it's going to be really difficult all the way through this one hour race, sure. I think. Now, we are looking at this trackside from near Deer Leap, but our weather expert, Bryn Lucas, is out on the grid. Um, is it suntan lotion or umbrella, Bryn? What have you got for us? <laughs> it's one of those weird ones, Adders, where you're not quite sure as well, even standing here. It's a very greasy track. I'm sure you can see that from your pictures. But, you know, the wind is blowing. I'm sure it's, that's going to start to sort of dry out a fair bit. And looking around, I don't think anyone down here knows what to do with the tyres either at this stage. I know that you've been chatting tyres, and it's going to be quite tricky to see how this one evolves. I was talking to a lot of the drivers and a lot of the teams before they started making their way to the grid talking tyre strategy and when it comes to their pit windows and moving over they're saying they might delay that first pit stop or that pit stop they must take just to try to deal with this weather because if it looks like it's going to be sunny after say 35 minutes they might delay that change over there to make the most of the, the wet weather tyres having an evenly matched pair of drivers really helps. Take the nearest, for example. There's not that much to choose between dad and lad. Uh, Father Richard will start, and he's really good in the wet. But in the case of some of the others, there's a more pronounced gap, isn't there, in the pace of the pro and the amp. So it all bodes well for a fascinating race. The cars are coming to the grid. Joe is peering out of the window, looking for yellow sidewalls, which are the slick tyres. And uh, there you can see Kevin Say's Sky Tempesta McLaren. Now that's going to be on the outside of the front row of the grid and Chris Froggart who is the second driver of that car is ready to talk to Bryn. Well we're talking tyres, a lot of head scratching. Kevin's got to start out there on this uh, lovely circuit, a circuit that he's done very well at before but on tyres that we're not quite sure what to do with Chris. What's the, what's the thinking about you know Kevin going out there, what's the game plan? Yeah so I mean Kevin's on, on wets now but we were just talking about it, he's saying it's pretty dry at the moment already so it was uh, asking what everyone else was doing I think most people are on wets as well um, it's tricky because he's got sort of 22 23 minutes stint chances are it could dry up but then looks like there's another cloud coming I think it's very difficult I think I'd be surprised if anyone starts on slicks now because I think with you know the first couple of laps being too wide I think it's gonna be very difficult to say stay on the dry line but uh, we'll see I think we'll stick with the wets just for safety of the car and, and, and to manage things a bit yeah, well, you've got to be in it to win it good luck Chris thanks very much let's take a little walk shall we so you just peer over my shoulder you can see that uh, James Cottingham's just arrived on the grid there with Johnny Adam who's going to be celebrating his 100th start in British GT I just saw one of the nearies this is like Sam's just over here let's get a quick word with with Sam Neary let's just jump in uh, Sam, can we have a quick word with you very quickly? It's good to see you guys back in British GT. Richard there as well, getting himself focused for this one. You know, last season was, was a, a tough season for you guys. What's the game plan going into this one? Uh, definitely stay out of trouble. It's the, definitely one of the game plans, but still try and win everything. Obviously, uh, for everyone, that's the game plan. So, uh, yeah, still try and win, but maybe take it a little bit more cautious. Uh, but that is me, not Richard, and uh, usually Richard starts. So I'm sure we will probably be up at the front uh, at the start of the race and then see what happens. Obviously, it's a drying track right now, so if it'll go to slicks, that's the question. Uh, people think it's slicks now, but it's if you can pass a GT4 or not. Alton's notorious for not being able to pass anyway, so in the wet. We've seen during the winter months you're working quite closely with Ian Loggy as well and some other championships. What's it like for you to be out here with a pedigree of driver? I mean, just looking alongside you there, there's some brilliant names, aren't there? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you've got Jules, you've got Raphael Marchiello, who are both 
classed as some of the best GT3 drivers in the world. So if I can be close to them or even beating them, I think I'm doing a decent job for a silver. So uh, no, we'll, we'll give it our best shot and uh, see where we end up. Well, good luck, Sam. Thanks. Thank you, mate. Thank you. And there is the reigning champion's car, Ian Loggy, the reigning GT3 uh, champion, that is. Joe, quick word. We've just been hearing from, from drivers talking about the dry line. Now, yes, there is only one dry line. That's going to make overtaking even harder. We know Alton Park is narrow, but when you don't want to go onto the wetter part of the road, it makes life even tougher. Yeah, and the, the dry line isn't always where the racing line either. Right. It depends on the surface, what's getting the sun or wind more. Joe giving some final instructions to Ian Loggy there. And it would just be a mainly keep your vision up high. Your third place, we don't need any heroics from you, mm. but we don't want to be caught in anything. And the further you look, the more time you've got to spot those dry patches and place the car on it and use that to your advantage, essentially. Now, we know there are going to be two green flag laps as well, just to give the drivers a chance to get used to the greasy conditions. This is the first time they've been on a damp circuit all weekend. Even the warm-up this morning was dry. The second of those green flag laps will count within the hour, but it will be, therefore, a proper rolling start rather than a... Uh, safety car start where the clock starts as soon as the drivers leave the grid. The countdown continues as you look at the uh, ABBA Racing Mercedes, the car that's going to be started by Richard Neary, and there in the pit lane, the Academy Motorsport Mustangs, and there's a McLaren lurking there as well, and they are near the back of the grid anyway, so therefore they are gambling here in terms of being able to choose the tyres at the very last moment and hopefully they're going to start at the back so they're not going to lose anything in terms of grid position but they'll get the tyre choice as accurate as they can I guess. Yeah and also the temperature talk about two green flag laps but if you're on slicks which I'm pretty sure the JMH67 McLaren and John Ferguson is the furthest forward slick GT3 runner that I've seen in P11 those slicks have been on the car for 10 minutes they're just bleeding all of their temperature and grip so that is a smart move by those three GT4 cars. Yeah, we'll try and work out which of the McLarens that was as well, but that's going to be interesting to, to monitor their progress. Now, number 90 uh, McLaren was very good in GT4 for pole position. Jack Brown is with Bryn. Well, Jack had some highs and lows last season as well, but it started pretty well so far going into 2023. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think we've got uh, the car dialed in very well. The team's great. Teammates great. Uh, double pole. It's looking good. Talk us through the, the way it's gone for you so far this season. You know, new teammate as well. Yeah, new teammate Charles. He's very quick. He's keeping me uh, pushing hard. Put it that way. We wish you the very best of luck for this one as well. Good luck there. As I just gate crashed him. Let's head down the grid very, very quickly. I know Ainsley Harriet is here with Harriet's chariot, but I'm not sure. Here he is. Let me just jump into Ainsley. He's about to do a start line. Ainsley, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see. You. Powered by Couscous, you said last year, and it's powered by Couscous again this year. Oh, absolutely, and thrilled. Really, really excited. Uh, weather's a bit indifferent. I think there are a lot of the drivers here are a little bit worried because they haven't raced in the wet this year yet. This is the first race of the, race of the season, though. They haven't practiced in the wet. So it's going to be a fantastic race. We know it. When it comes to TT racing, look at the cars. You know, they're so much more advanced this year. So really excited about it. What are you doing at home? You should be at Alston Park. This is where it happens. I could stir your couscous for you. <laughs> Do you know what? People have paid more money for that than we have. Oh, Ainsley, thank you very much thank indeed. It's great, great to see you back here. Race. Ainsley Harriet, of course, sponsoring the uh, the chariot. Harriet's chariot down there, Chris Salkeld. And now we've got 18 GT4 cars out on track there. Eight different manufacturers across the entire lot as well. It's phenomenal to see and a lot of brand new cars with the Artura. There's only one out there, old school 570S McLaren, right down the back just down there for Team Brit. I'm sure they'll be mixing it with the best as well over the course of this one. It's very exciting. I tell you what, the atmosphere around it is fantastic, Adders. This one, I reckon, is going to be a good one, and it's over to you to call it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. We are looking forward hugely to this. Uh, two races within one, of course, GT3 and GT4, and very shortly the cars are going to be released then onto the first of these two green flag laps. The road is drying all the time. We've been looking at cars coming onto the grid. Not that many, though, Joe, have made that gamble for slicks and, and part of that I suspect was touched on by Chris Frogger because he was talking about if you like preserving the car if, if it's the race with the am starting you don't want to make life even tougher for them yeah I think if this was the race the pro starts this afternoon I think we'd be more like a 75 split mm. on slicks rather than not and as we're yeah. saying it's the opposite way round first race of the year you don't want to crash the car so to give the am guy who maybe hasn't had the chance to drive in these conditions the five hours of testing before this have all been in the dry so suddenly they've got to quickly find their wet setup got to find their wet lines all of those small things so the wet is the boring but definitely the correct choice if i had an am starting i would be doing that so you can see that mercedes 
and that's the slick and then that's the wet so you see those grooves that's going to clear the water I don't think there's going to be much spray and you're taught as a kid unless you can see spray you should be on slicks because it's not clearing any water so you're giving up that contact patch that the grooves clear the water with for grip and that's the balance and we are right on the knife edge of what is right and what is wrong we've just seen one of the slick shot cars which is john ferguson's uh, mercedes that starts on the sixth row now john said he overdrove in qualifying uh, therefore further back on the grid to an extent therefore has he got anything to lose? Well, yes, definitely he has, but he's prepared because we know that John is a gutsy driver. He's prepared to roll the dice. But it could well be that very early into the opening stint of this race, drivers are on the radio saying we're going to have to box early because it is drying out so fast. What we don't yet know is when the next rain comes. There's a big patch of blue sky over Lodge Corner. There's quite a bit of grey elsewhere, so it really is a huge finger in the air exercise this for the drivers as you look there at James Cottingham and Kevin Say who lock out the front row of the grid for this opening round of the Intelligent Money uh, British GT Championship which is about to get underway here from Alton Park 67 McLaren I can't find on the grid unless it's hidden itself away but the cars are about to be released then now uh, onto the first of these two green flag laps it is there it's hidden so that car is good to go that's fine as the rest now accelerate away we know we've got those three however starting from the pit lane out of gt4 which could be a shrewd move not only in terms of the tire choice joe but also you're going to be behind rather than in any first lap dramas yeah old hall we've had quite a few incidents over the year it's possible to go two by two through there if you're the guy on the outside you need a lot of respect from the guy on the inside however to make it round so this is how they should have lined up. James Cottingham and Kevin Say on the front. We now know there are one or two gaps in the GT4 lineup, but that's the front row in GT3. Reigning champion Ian Loggy starts third. Richard Neary will be alongside him. And then to start fifth on the grid, Morgan Tilbrook ahead of Andrew Howard. Then on the fourth row, there is going to be Sean Balfe lining up alongside Darren Lung, race winner at the end of last year, and very much one to watch. Alexander West and Mark Radcliffe, uh, both aboard McLaren's, will be on the fifth row. John Ferguson is on row six. Mike Price switching from Porsches to Mercedes and British GT this year. He's going to be next in the Greystone GT entry. Then the Barwell Lamborghini and Mark Sanson and Lucky Carer switching to British GT this year as the cars come up through Britons. He lines up ahead of Mark Smith and then Ian Campbell. More McLaren's, which seems to be the Vogue car in GT3. Andre Borodin and Simon Orange round out the first nine rows, and that is the GT3 18 car entry. Jack Brown's on pole in GT4 with Aston Miller lining up alongside him. Then you've got Zach Meakin in the Porsche, run by T Parker Racing, and Ian Goff, former Ford star of years past, in yet another of these new McLaren Arturas. Freddie Tomlinson's Janessa, what else, is alongside the Aston Martin that are racing of Josh Miller, starting 25th on the grid. Uh, would have been Matt Cowley, but we now know that that car is going to be in the pit lane. Uh, uh, Harry Nunn should be on the grid, however, uh, next to go. Then there's Michael Creech moving from Touring Cars and uh, Kavi Jundu, newcomer to GT Racing there on 28th rank on the grid. Joe Wheeler is next and Will Moore's Mustang was another car. There it is, sitting in the pit lane. Still not looking as though it's in any hurry to get going. Sam Marlochnen and Michael Johnston will be next. 33rd on the grid is going to be Carl Cavers moving from Porsche Cayman Sprint Challenge and Aaron Morgan at Team Brit in one of the L570 McLarens is next ahead of Egg McDermott and uh, Ian Duggan to round out the 36 strong grid. Right, they come across the timing line. The clock now starts, so this is uh, within the race, as it were. This is uh, where the clock has started. So this warming up lap counts within the uh, 60 minutes as you see that queue of cars building at the end of the pit lane. Yeah, and we're seeing a few GT3s dive straight for the pit lane. And I think that's probably the clever move now. We're seeing yeah. how dry it is, especially at Britain's chicane. So seeing Optimum coming in there, coming in for six and another McLaren, looks like Lucky Carer. And I think that's a shrewd move. They're going to lose a lot of track position, but they should be able to catch and be on the back of the GT4s as the green light goes. So they won't be able to leave the pit lane as we see them queuing already. The pit lane will go green on the exit when the last car has gone through turn one. But I think that's the move I would have done. You see how dry that is. The lap times of the AMs in qualifying was in the 34s. I think the first flying lap for the guys on the wets so are going to be in the low 40s. And you tend to have a 10 second crossover. If you're within 10 seconds of your dry time on a wet, you should be on slicks. And I think we're going to see that by lap two. Interestingly, though, that number 62 Academy Mustang is still up on its jacks, suggesting there might be something more to that. However, uh, all is about to be revealed as we get set to go racing. 60 minutes, mandatory pit stops. There are two separate pit windows here. The GT3 cars pit between 22 and 32 minutes. The GT4 cars 
between 28 and 38 minutes. They don't have central wheel nuts on those cars, so they have a longer pit stop time of 100 seconds, whereas it's 70 for the GT3 cars. Just so the latest safety car comes down towards his lops, then into Nickerbrook on an ever-drying road. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, you can see under braking, it is yeah. perfectly dry. It's not even patchy. I say patchy. The other interesting bit of Alton Park, there is almost an infinite amount of types of surface. So it's not like that all the surface is the same, thus it dries at a different rate, and that's not factoring in shade, sun, wind. So that's why you'll start to see the patches. So I think all cars are now ready to go. That Mustang interesting has got the hottest slicks out of all of them. I think that's why they were waiting. It felt a bit racy, but I guess we're in, in a race. True enough, what we now need to make sure is that they don't end up going a lap down, whether this lap is going to have counted or whether it still counts as a green flag lap. However, uh, that will be resolved in a moment or two as you go on board now with Ian Loggy. So as they come out of Druid's corner, the field come down towards Lodge. So the cars come in towards Lodge corner. The safety car is going to peel its way to the uh, left of the road. So that's where it will uh, park should it be required and so now it is up to James Cottingham and Kevin Say to control the pace on the run up towards the line the opening round then of the intelligent money British GT championship from Alton Park is go the lights go out and a good getaway by James Cottingham as they accelerate down towards Old Hall corner for the first time others in the background coming into the pit lane for a tired change because it is drying all the time it's still a bit tiptoey through Old Hall but a good getaway by Cottingham up into second place then as they uh, make the run down towards Cascades has gone Ian Loggy and a really good getaway by Richard Neary for third and that means that Kevin Say has gone backwards, Joe, really, over the first couple of corners. Yeah, we saw the Ram Racing guys actually in warm-up this morning practice this formation flying. It's really helped. It's brought Neary with them, and that is the race I'm really interested in. Neary versus Loggy. I'm not stirring it up, but those two guys do not particularly like each other, and they're nose to tail, both on their home circuit, and both want to start the jump ship strong. But credit to everyone by keeping it on the island as they go around Island Bend into Shell for the first time. I think one of the other ones that pitted was Lucky Kara as the cars then now accelerate their way down through uh, his lobs for the first time then so coming over the brow James Cottingham will lead them down towards his lobs for the first time Ian Loggy chasing after him now we know that Richard Neary is brave in these damp conditions he's third Kevin Say and the McLaren is fourth then uh, the Mercedes all had a balance of performance adjustment from qualifying they're 15 kilos heavier so it's a rather different feel to the Mercedes today John Ferguson goes through now look at Ferguson number 15 he is on slicks and as yet is struggling because he's got the GT4 cars all queued up behind him yeah I'm pretty sure all those GT4s are on wets by the look of it and Ferguson is just looking for grip he needs those tires back up temperature a bit of a squeeze there on the leading GT4 McLaren this multi-class racing is so exciting he needs another two or three laps I would guess those tires are at 40 50 degrees and they need to be more like 90 and 100 and the only way you get that temperature is by going faster and faster on these dry bits of the track he's got the aero advantage and the power so it'll be interesting to see you're going to see a GT4 car essentially lunging the GT3 is he going to put it down the inside because he's under pressure look at the train of cars behind him building up because he's being held up by GT3 car and of course all of this time is being hemorrhaged there will be a tipping point won't there when those tires start to work so it's damage limitation for the moment as you go on board heading down towards Old Hall corner then with Aston Miller in the DTO McLaren looking for a way into the class lead at the moment the leading GT4 McLaren is out of Jack Brown round the outside there goes the Aston Martin then so Josh Miller is in a big big hurry as well they've all survived but right now John Ferguson is down in 13th place Cottingham led at the end of that one by 1.5 six seconds there will be two or three laps time the pace in the tires of that Mercedes for it to pull away but for now John Ferguson is hating every bit into this and strife already because there in the gravel is number 67 McLaren that's Simon Orange that has dumped it and I rather fear this could be an early interruption with a safety car because it's a bit stuck that yeah I think it is and you saw the slick tires not getting any grip on the gravel safety car called so everyone's going to bunch up be a few people happy with that I think the biggest winner is Ferguson this is going to yeah. give him a chance to get those tires up to championship and then Jack Brown and that GT4 McLaren because it was awkward for him he couldn't do anything but he was getting pushed back into the guys behind him. Can I just throw something else at you to do with tyre temperature, which is something that stemmed from a touring car race and a, a, something a driver once said to me, which is that although you might think it now helps because you know, the road will be drying as they're under the safety car like this, because you're going so slowly, you're not actually getting the temperature 
into the slick, so is it a bit sort of self-defeating? It's not as good as running flat out, of course, but the ability now to work the, the brakes are the big thing. You've got these huge, huge, huge brakes on the car that are happy to run at six, 700 degrees, and they then radiate the heat into the rim, into the wheel. So as long as he's really working those brakes, Ferguson, this is, they will get up to a better temperature than they are currently now, even flat out in these mixed conditions, and he can then get going. I honestly think he's about to have the best 20 minutes of his life picking yeah. off all these other Rams. Everyone in front of him is on wets. He is now the only slick running GT3 on that main pack, as we've seen Simon Orange go. But it shows how easy it is to make a mistake. Orange's race is done, yeah. which again proves that probably the wet was still the right choice for the majority of these Am drivers in GT3. The other benefit for John Ferguson here is that even if he can't gain places under the safety car, the pack should bunch up a little bit. So in terms of time lost, he's not lost as much and the available racing time in this first stint is less anyway partly because of the safety car partly because of the extra green flag lap so there's less time for the amps to lose time which their pro drivers would have to do there's a big big gap lower down now just talk us through the start here joe so it's actually quite cagey by everyone there's some big gaps in there i think that's just because they don't want to be rim ramming the rear of anyone this early on but i'd want my amp to be a bit closer there's a lot of space being given that's why kevin says lost two places because he was so far back even off the leader cottingham and that's free time. You see the GT4 is always a bit more strung out. So this is on board with Say. He needs to be looking to his right more, looking at Cotton, and not at the lights. Look at that. He's already lost two and a half, three car lengths. You can see Loggy already passed, Neary already passed. That start, he needs to be more eyes on, more aggressive. It looks like he's conceded way too early. He's almost sort of happy to slot in and want yeah. that inside line. He didn't want the risky outside line that I alluded to earlier. And that was James Cottingham down through Cascades. Ian Loggy making good progress. And Richard Neary, uh, likewise, from the second row of the grid, also gaining ground. And there, John Ferguson at the back of the GT3 pack, being caught by the GT4s. Yeah, it's really difficult to see Simon Orange uh, tiptoeing around. And I would assume he's just lost an under braking into Lodge. Rear's locked, and that's why it's rotated into the gravel trap. So GT4 pitting for slick tyres. So these guys have got to try and get it done before they go a lap down. Exactly. The safety car. It's a very fast car, it's Lotus Vora, it's already at Druids. I don't think that Aston Martin's going to get out, so he's going to go a lap down. I think that's the wrong call. I think you've got to stay out until the pit window and do the tyre change as your mandatory pit stop. So they come now down towards Lodge Corner. Of course, the, the GT4 teams have slower pit stops anyway without that central uh, locking wheel nut. So we know they're always going to lose more time. But yes, it's not, I fear, going to have been the right call because the safety car is coming through Lodge Corner as also is the retrieved McLaren and they make their way uh, now up towards the timing line to clarify earlier concerns although the clock started that second green flag lap only counted as a green flag lap it was not counted as a racing lap if that makes any sense so uh, although the green flag lap was within the time the first racing lap was the first lap completed by they had been released so we're looking as i've been explaining already at a, a slightly shorter race and that's why the, the ams are losing less time if you like within their first stint uh, relative to the pace of their pro co-driver the longer we can keep them all bunched up like this the better stint two is always going to be um, but the road now looking so so dry are we going to end up in a situation where towards the end of this stint the drivers are having to find the wet patches to cool the tires yeah most definitely in the obviously importance of that the tread block on the wet just starts to move around and the more it moves around it generates its own heat not even in the surface but in the core and extreme extreme examples you actually get these chunks ripping off the tire because they just can't hold on to the carcass anymore around here the front right takes a real pounding for a lot of the long fast corners so the drivers will be trying to take out some of the steering lock not to push through the understeer the teams will be reminding them of this maybe even a bit higher on the traction control so they don't get any wheel spin higher on the ABS so they don't lock anything it's going to be really difficult they've got about it's going to be about 10 minutes isn't it until the pit window opens for the GT3 when they go back to green so six or seven laps that's a lot to ask on a very very dry track but it's the only option that's what's quite interesting about it the drivers will be on the radio moaning to the team <laughs> I need to be on slicks <laughs> and the team might just unplug the radio and leave them to it and plug back in when they want them to box <laughs> for the pit window because there is nothing they can do the drivers are helpless this is all on them now Right, so there, sad to say, is that our racing Aston. It was fourth in GT4, but is now a retirement in the paddock in the team's area. And so for uh, normally one of the quick combinations, Josh Miller and Seb Hopkins, that car out of the race. Right, on board with Ian Loggy, then the reigning champion, the two C's Mercedes running in the 
1997 FIA GT Mercedes livery from the CLKs. It's inspired by that colour scheme. We've got other retro liveries uh, on the grid. As the lights go out on top of the safety car, meaning that we are back racing this time. Lorna Vickers, Formula Ford racer, the safety car driver, brings it down towards the large corner. And on a greasy circuit, we are about to have the cars released once more. Then James Cottingham accelerates now up through Deer Leap, does he? He bunches them up a little bit, lets the safety car go, floors the throttle and accelerates up towards the line, trying to gain another length over Ian Loggy. But now they've got to, of course, remember the tyre temperature will be slightly different from when they were last at uh, racing pace because they've had those couple of laps behind the safety car. The GT3 field then pours through and drama in the background. We've got a Ginetta which has got damaged. The bonnet flies. Now, what triggered all that? There must have been a bit of bunching up, I would guess, into the last corner just as the safety car was coming in and I assume they've rear-ended someone and broken the pins on the front. I'm a bit worried about how much debris that is on yeah. the track. It could lead to another safety car straight away. The good thing with the safety car is obviously a huge space of track now because all the cars are together. If there's a marshal that's much, much braver than me, they might venture onto the track and try and yank that Janetta bonnet out of the way. On instruction from Peter Daly, the race director. So James Cottingham then leads the way and Ian Loggy dropping back. There is a brave marshal and there he is scooping up what's left of the bodywork of Joe Wheeler's uh, genetic it was. So Joe Wheeler, son of uh, the late Peter Wheeler, the TVR owner, he was at the wheel of that car. Right, Cottingham has checked out, hasn't he, on this lap? He has really been able to convert uh, the advantage behind the safety car into a good gap with the race lead. Now, remember, of course, James Cottingham, uh, historic specialist. Those cars slide around a little bit, so perhaps that helps him in these conditions. Definitely, it will feel like an historic car. I remember first driving a historic car after doing modern stuff. I'm like, this is out of control. <laughs> this is how it's going to feel. Looking at Kevin Say's on board there, on his dash, I can see his tyre pressures. Garage 59 has done an amazing job and started them so low. They've still got quite a lot of headroom that they can go up before he loses performance. I saw 1.5 bar, and they can go anything up to 1.5 1.9, even two in these conditions before he's going to lose pace. And I think that's why he looks so racy. I think his car is going to really come to him in these next five or six laps before they camp here. I think he wants to get on the front foot and try and get back to where he should have been after the start. Right, leaders come through. Cottingham is ahead of Loggy there, but it's game on for third. Richard Neary dropping back into the clutches of Kevin Say. Winner here back in 2020. He's getting more and more confident now. Is the Macanese driver. He's quick through Old Hall Corner. You're riding with him. And now lining up to have a go at the green Team Abba racing Mercedes in third place down towards Cascades. The trouble is, though, Joe, he's going to have to go offline to make the pass. Offline means greasy, means damp, means difficult. And you add to that, look at the rear camera. You can see the radar lights flashing. He's got someone right on his back. And it's Andrew Howard, probably another guy that you wouldn't want hustling you around here. Yeah. This battle pack is going to be interesting. His best chance is into the second chicane, Nickerbrook. So we're going to run through shell here can't really overtake here it's too narrow first chicane is too narrow and the breaking point is too curved there's no way to get a car down so what he needs to do here is open the corner up so by that i mean round the left part here open it up and concentrate on a good exit go get on the gas you've got to try and get a run all the way down it looks like he's got a couple of k on him you've got to brave it out stay right he's already gone to the outside so this is a hard move now he's got the overlap but he's got to go all the way around the outside of richard neary and i haven't got enough money to pay to want to be there and he decides the same <laughs> still got a chance for a cut back here he needs to hold him over don't let neary cut your nose off back in get it in over the curb go full gas that Merck's got some good traction as well, but we do have a run. What's Neary doing in the middle of the road? Clever guy, blocks the off path. We've lost our momentum. That's another lap done where our next overtaking opportunity really is into the last corner. But that is good, fair, hard racing. Oh, you heard Kevin say, have a lift there because there was just no room for him. But he's going to have a go, is he? Coming down towards Lodge Corner. Yes, yes, yes. Kevin say lines it up. Full send down the inside. This is brave stuff. Richard Neary breaks even later, though. Even braver. Can he make the corner? He's gone in deep. Kevin Say fights back. Behind them, there's another car all over the grass. And Kevin Say will be ahead as they make the run over the timing line because the McLaren got the better run. He's got the job done. And here comes Andrew Howard. He's going to get past one. He's going to try to get past two. Fantastic move by Andrew Howard. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Two places gained down towards Old Hall Corner. That is absolutely extraordinary. Hat tip to Andrew Howard. Brilliant move. Mr. Whippy put a flake in it. <laughs> Who says you can't overtake round Alton Park? That was genuinely one of the best overtakes I've ever seen. I thought he was going to just follow safe through and be happy yeah. with a move on Neary, but on the front foot, and he went for it. So clean, so much respect from our AM drivers. I don't want to talk them down as AMs, but this isn't their job. They are doing this for fun. They want to win, but that was incredible. As we see the GT4 uh, Mercedes, they're just stuck in the gravel. Can he get out? He needs to be super smooth on the throttle, and he's got a chance of just yeah. getting a little bit of traction. Go on. Hopefully the left-hand wheel is just on. Marshall doing a great job there, pushing that one out.
Almost, almost, almost. So we had, as we'd seen, other McLarens bouncing all over the grass. I think Morgan Tilbrook was the one uh, that bounced wide. So he has dropped back, but this car ain't for shifting as we go now with rain falling on board with 93 Kevin Say. The wiper is on and it's looking a bit wetter on that windscreen. There are spots of rain falling on our window here. So suddenly those that have been on the slick tyres are going to be at another disadvantage and John Ferguson will want to come in as early as he can. Yeah, we're just on the crossover period, aren't we? Of lap time. Ferguson last lap 46.7. Fastest lap uh, costing 44.6. So we're still two seconds off. Ferguson's more in the mid pack, got double wave yellow, so have to slow down obviously for that Mercedes still stranded there. Just got going. Oh, amazing, clear, that's good, good timing. So yellow should go. Really, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, as you said, the rain is falling, so now it shifts on it, definitely being slicks to going, well, the driver's about to get in. What tires do you want? Andrew Howard is the hero though, isn't he? He's now done a personal best lap. He's done a 45-0, seven tenths quicker than Ian Loggy. The Aston reveling in these conditions. And look at Andrew Howard go. Good exit from Old Hall Corner. He's going to be level with Loggy. Is he not quite going into Denton's? Ian Loggy having to make that a very wide Mercedes. But Andrew Howard then, the uh, ice cream magnate, Beach Dean Ice Cream is his company. A big flash of the lights. He and Ross Gunn share this car. And he looks for a way up past Ian Loggy. Can't do it on the way down towards Island Bend. All of this is enabling the leader, James Cottingham, to get away, of course. Yeah, and Howard's last lap that you alluded to, that was while overtaking two cars into turn That's one. Right, yes. So that Aston has got pace to burn, and you can see that from this rear onboard video as we go now looking at it from the rear. It has got serious traction, getting held up by that GT4 Merc, getting pushed out. It cut across the front of Howard. That was unfortunate for Andrew. Look how much time that loses. And that will be the theme of British GT this year. GT4s, GT3s, the mix. Where do they split the pack? Look at that, that's got to be one and a half, two seconds lost. Kevin Say lost the same amount as well, so they've got to get back to it. Move on, forget about it, get get back on the pace. And be patient, not let that get under your skin. Okay, I've lost out to a back marker, but the chances are that my rival will lose out to a back marker, so over the course of a stint, it should just about balance. I see your logic, it never works out. Never works. You okay, always fine. feel like you're the one that's <laughs> always got done over the hardest by all of them, but yeah, <laughs> it will do. Look at Cottingham's yeah. lead, as we said, really stretching out. The rain again just starts to slow down a bit. Maybe that was just a little one just to scare the teams in what they're going to do. But these guys can pit in the next three and a half minutes. The lap times they're at, it's going to be actually really tight whether they can pit at the end of the following lap. Not the one they're coming on to, sorry, the one after that. Let's watch this, this Aston. I want to see where the BOP is at, what the difference is, what the strength of the car. Andrew Howard flashing his headlight in vain. I love when drivers do it, but it's so annoying to watch in the mirror. But it feels great when you're in the car in all fairness, so I can see what he's doing. So front end look of the car, gets it in, tucked in, and off he goes. But despite the time lost in traffic, they're nose to tail again now. It was four tenths over the line. As you say, the Aston with pace to burn. He's shaken off Kevin Say once more, so it is when, not if. Howard gets past Loggy. The spots of rain over here have just about disappeared. So as you say, he's been teasing the teams. But Cottingham, four seconds to the good. He is making hay while the sun isn't shining, so to speak, here. He's benefiting from the squabbling behind. Yeah, and I alluded to the BOP, but Cotton is proving the Merck BOP isn't weak. Even after the 15 kilo uh, weight increase after qualifying, they're still going well. So super slow-mo through the first chicane. We've got the Ginetta GT4 going stage left for him there. He's going to miss those barriers, but look at the grass, the rear end kicking up. He's trying to not lock the brake so he can then rotate it, but that radiator is full of grass, and ideally that's full of air to slow and cool the car down, more importantly, in that, in that aspect. That was Freddie Tomlinson going off the road as James Cottingham from that great high shot looking down on his locks goes through in the lead. That's the battle of the second. Ian Loggy, Mercedes, Andrew Howard, Aston Martin. Small gap back to Kevin Say in the leading McLaren. So Mercedes, despite the extra weight put on for today, one and two at the moment. Richard Neary, who we were anticipating great things from in the wet, has dropped back into fifth and has fallen a second and a half away. And then sixth is Donington at the end of last year, winner Darren Lung. Seventh is Alexander West's McLaren. Eighth, Morgan Tilbrook McLaren. Ninth is Mike Price going well. Mercedes and tenth is the Lamborghini of Sean Balfe. Now in GT4, the Mustangs from the pits trying to battle their way into contention and taking with them the uh, McLaren. You can see the GT3 McLaren of Mark Smith that he shares with Martin Plowman. But Mark, relatively inexperienced. So for him, this is really about mileage. Yeah, Academy have done a great job. Look at those cars running nose to tail. When you think they were dead, dead last 
uh, in their category and now they've climbed all the way back up inside the top five those guys are in really really good contention now that is smart smart move by the academy motorsport guys however john ferguson on the slicks in gt3 that lap lost 10 seconds so i don't know if that was a half spin or what we've seen but that is more likely to happen as it gets a bit damper again but i feel it's drying again now it's going to be so interesting to see what the pros do i think you've got to take slicks yeah. i think if you don't you're, you're just going to be hung out to dry in the opposite sort of way of that phrase the fastest lap of the race has been done by number 27, Mark Radcliffe. Now, that was a car that came in for slick tyres uh, at the end of one of those two installation laps. So, Mark Radcliffe has done a 43.718, and the leader last time did a 46. So, at the moment, slicks are the way to go. Yeah, and he's within that 10-second window that I said about earlier where he should be on slicks. So, again, that's just more information for the teams of what they can do. These guys are so close to be able to box this lap. They're about to come into the final sector, which is typically 30 seconds in a GT3. So they should be able to just about pit. The only thing I don't want them to get caught out by is that the pit entry line is slightly before the finish line. So these guys will want to come in as soon as they can now, I think, to get the pros in, but also to get slicks on these cars. This is Kevin Say fighting back at Andrew Howard as they come now through Druids, the clock ticks on down, 38 minutes of the race to go. Loggy still being able to hang on to that second, despite the pace of the Aston. Yeah, it's really yeah. tight, isn't it? You can see Loggy holding them up, but Andrew Howard hasn't quite got the answer for it. They're staying to the right. It looks like all three are boxing. Kevin Say uh, is staying out. Not a, not a bad move, that. He's obviously probably been instructed by the team there to do the opposite, and you find that quite a lot as a driver. There's no point following around because you won't get the jump. If he can have a mega lap now, he's got a chance. The problem is his lap that he's going up against is the pros getting into these cars. So the overcut, as it's called for that Garage 59 car, is going to be super difficult. Loggy throwing his seat out, racing the pit stops. Everyone's pit stop is the same in this first race, obviously. You talked about John Ferguson losing time. An incident involving him and Mark Sampson's Lamborghini is going to be looked at after the race. So that might be part of why there was that slow lap. More and more coming in, including John Ferguson. So... You're going to have much yellow in to that car, number 15, Jules Gounon into number one. Uh, we're going to have uh, Ross Gunn taking over from Andrew Howard, who's still, for our money, I think, done the move of the race. Yeah, it was amazing. He, he should be walking with his shoulders back a bit more there, Andrew. That was <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. So you see the pit crew's ready to push back. Four mechanics allowed have to push back, and as soon as they're pushed back, they've got to go. They cannot block the pit lane. So it looks like they've got out before, and they're going that. I'm not pointing fingers for that isn't how the rules are written. He held for too long, and they actually blocked in the two C's car. They couldn't push back because Beach Dean were holding behind them, in my opinion. But were they not holding because there was traffic coming down the pit lane and they couldn't have been released into the line of the traffic? The discussion will continue. However, what that has also done, remember, is give the Aston Martin track position now over the number one Mercedes. So Ross Gunn is ahead of Jules Gounon. Most cars were in the other order before. In other words, it was Mercedes ahead of Aston Martin. So James Cottingham stayed out and leads. Kevin Say stayed out and he's up into second. That's Dan Harper in the BMW. Uh, he's just taken over from Darren Lung, who did the first stint. So we've had the driver change there. Dan Harper, Carrera Cup GB champion a few years ago. Great to have him back in uh, UK racing, as well as a GT World Challenge Europe program this year in the Fanatec GT series there another of the driver changes goes on that is then now james cottingham in and kevin say is in as well so johnny adam takes over number four rather cruelly that team had been put next to aston martin just to confuse johnny just to taunt him uh kevin say replaced by chris froggart and richard neary will give way to son sam Alexander West is in to give way to Marvin Kirchhoff for Mike Price for Callum McLeod. So now just about everybody from GT3 bails for the pits. See the driver change. Both quite calm, getting the belts on. The ones that go around your waist are allowed bungee, so they ping out of place. Okay. The centre one you pick up and put between your legs, and then the shoulder ones are laid over. So he's just getting that adjusted. Bit of a tighten. You can see the top ones, his shoulder straps, still a bit loose. He'll give them a tug going down pit lane just to make sure he's happy with them and he, he's going to get pushed back anytime soon as we see Johnny Adam joining. And importantly for Johnny, he's in a good bit of space there. Shouldn't be between these GT4 cars. Maybe that Optum car's just going to get him. But these guys need to get up to speed. If I'm going to play my little violin for the pros, they've got some tricky conditions to hit the ground running with. It's not easy getting in the middle of the race and getting on it, but in these conditions, there's a lot of time to be lost, but also a lot of time to be gained. See, Johnny Adam's still got the lead over Ross Gunn in that Aston Martin. So it looks like that is pretty much status quo, but we've lost a bit of time to, to Goon on there and Harper's all over the yeah. back of him. 
Yeah, that BMW is going nicely in these conditions. You'd have anticipated Jules Gounon, with all due deference to Dan Harper, uh, to be very, very quick indeed. Well, he's about to jump ahead of Chris Froggart, isn't he, as they make this run now along Lakeside Straight. Mercedes to the inside, and Jules Gounon dives through, gains the place. And now, perhaps as he gets more confident on these uh, tyres in the Mercedes, he is able to push, but Chris Froggart then loses the spot and loses another to Dan Harper. So the Sky Tempesta McLaren, two places back already. And again, I think that shows how much time Ram lost in the pit stop, not being able to push back for whatever reason, You're, you being right or me being right, one of those. And because they got a whole gap behind that Sky Tempesta car, and that was Jules Goulon's outlap versus Kevin Say's inlap, and you would put a bit more money on Jules being able to get that pace there. But it's going to be interesting to see what Harper does here. He's got over 30 minutes remaining. Looks like he's got the slight pace advantage at the moment. I think he should strike while the iron is hot. He's on the back of Goulon. In case Goulon's car gets better as the stint goes on, yeah. you want track position. Where's he going to do it? The BMW looks so strong in this mid and high speed cornering. We saw some great moves getting lined up into this next corner lodge. Is he going to be able to get a run on? And that's the hard thing. These GT3 cars do produce a lot of downforce. And that's when you're behind, you get in this dirty air and you just lose a little bit there. They both get down to the inside. Optimum GT4 car staying out of their way nicely. Not too much time loss, but still probably half a second. It all starts to add up depending on how lucky you are with the traffic. You can see the car's really coming alive, can't you now? They didn't exactly look slow before, but now the uh, braking is later, they're dancing around more, Jules Gounon goes through. Now, because the GT4 pit window is yet to open, and therefore those cars are staying out, they are the on-the-road leaders. It's the two Mustangs that started in the pits that actually lead the race outright. It's a phony lead, of course, because you can see Johnny Adam is behind them, and he's about to go through, plus they've got a pit stop anyway, but it's just one of the quirks of the race with these two staggered pit windows. Yeah, if I was Matt Nickel-Jones, the teammate of Will Moore in the 62 car, and the team owner of it i'd be taking a screenshot of that that's amazing so that was actually technically a, a change for the race lead there exactly. as johnny adam came through but again it really illustrates how important strategy can be in these difficult conditions now jules gounon has done the fastest lap of the race so he's done a 37 3 he is the lap record holder in totally dry conditions fastest lap uh, so now you've got johnny adam there in the yellow mercedes in the lead of the race second look is will moore third is matt cowley the two mustangs together and then fourth the aston martin of ross gunn make that third and he's about to make that second around the outside heading up towards the water tower no footbridge at clay hill it all looks a bit different this weekend as now ross gunn dives to the inside and it's game on for the lead now between johnny adams mercedes still takes some getting used to that and the aston martin of ross gunn behind him and then look jules gounon with his elbows out carving his way through the traffic he's got dan harper behind him mustangs in front mercedes to the left of him through lodge absolutely nose to tail fantastic fight for third place and these two are catching the leaders uh, harper's got a bit of a run here gounon did a good job at blocking him on the inside so he couldn't get the run but harper looks racy doesn't he can see the car darting left to right just trying to get in the mirror of gounon just to catch his eye just at the wrong time gounon's got far too much experience for that but when there's gt4 cars around the the, the stress levels are high for these guys even though they're the best in the world as we're saying it is still still so difficult i think i think ross gunn has got a lot of pace here i think yeah. sort of andrew howard when he started the car i think johnny adams is going to have a real battle on his hands but that mclaren just going through shot is the fastest car on the circuit marcus clutton has now done a 135 981 as the fastest lap of the race there are the gt4 leading mustangs from the pits on the right tire choice therefore and this is harper versus gounon jules is having to be very very defensive here because dan harper is a man on a mission isn't he yeah, and I've heard great things about Dan. I've yet to race against him. Let's see how clean he is, because I think the frustration levels are going to go. And by clean, I mean, I think one of the best opportunities is going to be to get real close under braking and maybe just give him a little nudge. Just bleed out the brake, let the car run into the back of the one in front, which sometimes just gives it a bit of a slide, stops that driver getting on the throttle when he wanted to, and then you can get the go. It depends how dirty you want to go. Round one of a championship may be a bit too punchy to pull out those moves that early on. Yeah, Dan Harper, Carrera Cup GB champion a few seasons back, and it was on the, the back of that that uh, BMW picked him up, put him into the junior program. Now he's a fully-fledged BMW factory driver, and he is giving Mercedes factory driver Jules Gounon a tough time. Never before has 
the British GT Championship or, if you like, GT World Challenge Great Britain, given the quality of the entry, had such a star-studded cast. Lead gap, 1.6 seconds. Adam to Gunn. Ross Gunn now does the fastest lap at a 1.35.6, so he is fractionally faster than the leader. The gap is coming down. Third is Jules Gounon, who's a bit busy defending from Dan Harper. Marcus Clutton is in the background fifth, as there is the GT4 pole sitting McLaren number 90 in and now of course the floodgates open in GT4 more and more of them come for the pits driver change yes possibly tire change in some cases as well yeah it's really going to be the battle of the wet runners going on to slicks now because I think Academy have got it sewn up basically as long as they have a clean pit stop their advantage was massive and that really showed all the way through the end of that stint there. Ross Gunn took a second out of Johnny Adam on that last lap. I think Johnny Adam's going to start getting a bit of PTSD here, seeing that Aston Martin. It's going to be like seeing an X in a bar just looming in your mirrors, <laughs> getting larger and larger. And he's going to have to really get his elbows out. Ross Gunn is almost like the new Johnny Adam, I think. Johnny's done so much for Aston Martin over the years. Ross Gunn now really coming through their ranks, really respected internally, I know, at ProDrive. I think this is going to get very spicy. I think we've got like three big battle packs forming. I think we've just gone halfway through and I think I've just taken my first breath as you look at this. GT4s are doing a good job. They're staying off the line, giving the GT3s the racing line, not losing time. Sam Neary runs wide though. And that then holds everyone up. Look at that. You've got Callum McLeod, you've got Marciello, three Mercedes, two GT4 Mercs, almost all in the wrong order as well. They all need yeah. to swap themselves round, but politely, hopefully. Marciello is only 12, but he won't stay there. And there going wide is Sam Neary. He's off the road. This might not end well. He toboggans across the grass, across the grass, misses everybody. He's in the gravel. If he's got the momentum, he might be able to dig himself out the other side, but a spin means that he won't be able to. And that, I fear, is going to be a safety car, which will throw things completely out of the window. That was some move, though, that didn't pay off. He got edged towards the grass, didn't he? But how he missed everybody. Yeah, I had to mute oh. my mic there to stop myself saying what I wanted to <laughs> there. It just looked like he wanted to get round that Mustang that he just lost the place back to in the middle of Nickerbrook. And it was a bit desperate. Two wheels on the wet grass was never going to end well. Marciello, I think we've got to give a lot of credit to. That would have been in his blind spot of his a pillar but he knew something wasn't right and you could see him back up yeah. into druids to allow this space for neary to fly across the track and it looked like neary was a little unlucky and it looked like the front just dug into the gravel and then hooked him in it's going to be difficult to get that car away without another safety car is my fear slash i'm actually really happy about it because it's going to bunch all these guys up and it's going to give us a really one safety car is deployed so this is interesting this is going to be hard for the mustang guys who've just pitted this potentially is going to really hurt it we see a bit of splitter damage down that front corner yes race cars are low but that looks way too low the tire is okay what they're going to do you can see it's missing that track rod on the other side that silver bar that is now missing so they've got to try and do something tape and cable ties that's your best choice did that come with the mercedes of the nearest because it was those mustangs that he was trying to go around the outside it wouldn't have taken much to touch to do the damage would it there is the safety car again, uh, so our second visit of the Lotus safety car out on track. And this is partly to retrieve the nearest Mercedes. It's also so that Joe and I can go <sighs> and take a breath because that has been a frenetic race thus far. 26 and three quarter minutes of it to go. So all of those gaps disappear now. Yep, exactly. The only thing that does get added in is the GT4 element. Yeah. So from the GT4 perspective, it actually can be hugely frustrating because if you've been overtaken by the GT3 leader, you effectively lose a lap because yeah, you're stuck really. in that train. But it will make it interesting. A restart so hard when you've got a GT4 in front of you when you're in the GT3 because you want to get close to them over the line, but you've got so much more speed. You almost need to hang back and time it so you're passing them as you go across the line. And again, you'll see the top GT3 drivers doing that. The Mustang has been sent out, so they're obviously happy with the splitter. Sometimes you get unlucky and the scrutineer spots it and won't let you rejoin if they deem it too dangerous. They've had a big jump in front of the 62 car though, so I'm a bit worried for that car, potential issue there. Um, and again, these guys have been lucky. I think the pit exit light probably could be red or should be red, should I say, because the safety car is out and the pack is there, but you take, take the luck when you can. I'm just wondering, maybe this 62 Mustang we're looking at pitted a lap after, because they don't look too bothered. Yeah. So I think that was the confusing yeah. end. But again, shows you how long the pit stop is, that you pit one lap ahead and you're still only leaving as the next car enters. Yeah, GT4 pit stop is 100 seconds. But I think, yes, 61 had to come in when it did because of the damage. And I still put that down to a brush with the Mercedes, which, considering the speed it went off the road at, has got away lightly only in the gravel and Sam Neary might have a huge laundry bill, but at least there's no big uh, repair bill for the car to have to worry about in the other commercials 
uh, entry. He's been put back into it so that when it's hoiked out of the gravel, he can drive it back to the pit lane. We've not really talked much about the Barwell Lamborghinis. They're lighter than they were for qualifying. Sandy Mitchell's car, number 78, going through. He's taken that over from Sean Balf, and uh, 62 is about to rejoin. That's now got Patron, Matt Nichol-Jones at the wheel of it who is the uh, brains behind Academy Motorsport. Very accomplished racer himself, and he will take that car into the second stint of the race, which has now got 24 and a half minutes, just a shade over, still to go. Yeah, and, and I've raced against Matt for many a year. He is one of the most aggressive guys. I've been hit by him more times than I care to remember. And it Shouldn't always have reversed into it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you said to me as well, but I'm pretty sure I was <laughs> the one in front. But uh, yeah, this is going to get real interesting, real fast. Who do I think is in a good position? I think we saw the speed of Gunn. I think we saw the speed of Harper. We saw the speed of Clutton. But as the track yeah. evolves, we're still a couple of seconds away from what I'd call our ultimate dry pace. And that's the track probably rubbering in mm -hmm. a little bit more. When the track rubbers up, obviously gives more grip. You can brake later, carry more speed. All of those small things. But we're really starting to see who's got the pace when it comes to the race stuff. Now, Johnny Adam has got one back marker between himself and Ross Gunn. In other words, he's got a, a tiny cushion, hasn't he, on the restart because he can try and get away whilst Ross Gunn sorts out the back marker. And you can only do that overtaking once you've crossed the timing line. Yeah, the, the technique he should probably do is as soon as the safety car turns his lights off, he can then have whatever gap he wants to that safety car. Yeah. While the lights are on, he has to be within five lengths. But as soon as the lights go off, he should slow the pack right down to the minimum, 40 Ks, get that gap and then go early. Because if he goes early, that GT4 can't stay with him, yeah. but Gunn has to stay behind him. Exactly. If Adam does this right, which I know he will, I'm setting him up here, he's gonna be eight seconds ahead over the line. That's my uh, prediction, replay time. Okay, so this is what happened to uh, Sam Neary. So he comes through his lot, runs out wide there, gets crossed up. That's what puts him back behind Mustang 62. So there's 61 that drops to the back. Already rib damage on that front yeah, left, okay. I think. You're so right. the 62 one now is you're going to take its racing line, which is entitled to, and Neary just trying to make the space. I, I see both sides of it, and it is a full racing incident. Watch March Yellow here, that second Mercedes, the white one. Uh, for me, he's slowed that down. He's kept it so tight on the inside just to buy himself a bit of time not to get absolutely nailed there. But great and instant for me. I get it from both sides. No one to blame, but unfortunately for the Neary's, that is day done, obviously. So you can see the commitment from Sam Neary. He wanted to get through the traffic, ran out of room, and on wet grass, that was always going to be Larry. Uh, but yes, two separate incidents then. We've seen damage on the Mustang, but we've now confirmed that was separate from uh, anything that involved Sam up at Water Tower. So we're still behind the safety car. Uh, we will await the road to be cleared, and then the safety car will be uh, able to come back to the pit lane and we'll get things back underway. There's going to be quite a lot of work for some of the teams to do before race two. Not too much damage, thankfully, but quite a few things to just adjust. And who knows what the weather has in store, well, even for the next uh, 21 minutes, never mind race two. But it's taking a bit longer than hope to get that car out of the way, partly because... Uh, it's a long way through the gravel and it's not easy to get a snatch vehicle across that. Yeah, no really one at the snatch vehicle getting stuck, so it's got to have a long, long rope to hoik it out of the way. Yeah, I was hoping they would tow it backwards, but I think it's a little bit too far past that opening in the barrier and the turning circle on the GT3 car is next to nothing. So I think it's taken them a little while because they have to pull it across 35, 40 meters of gravel. So I think the safety car probably should come in this lap would be my prediction as long as everything goes smoothly here. We have a number of cars under investigation for their uh, pit stops. This, I suspect, is to do with time. And one of them, perhaps the most significant, is number 93, the Frog at, say, Sky Tempest and McLaren. 78, Sandy Mitchell's car is under investigation. So also 56, Freddie Tomlinson and Stuart Middleton's Ginetta. Uh, and 68, the Team Brit McLaren, the older 570S of Aaron Morgan, now Bobby Trundley. So if you're fractionally under on the pit stop time, and it's the, the loop at pit in, the loop at pit out, the information is there from TSL, the timekeeping force, they can then give that to Peter Daly, the race director, and say, look, they're under by X, and the information is there. You're pretty much banged to rights, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. There is a, a very good timing system that most of the teams use now, which is GPS orientated, and when you come in over the line, it starts the counter, and then it knows when you should be pushing back, and it counts you down to the line. The problem is, as a greedy racing driver, you always want to get as close as you can. So you, you try and get 0.0, .0 but if the team haven't put much margin, as we see Neary spin it back round. Um, Neary could continue here, but he's two laps yeah. down. What should he do? He should box. He's hopefully spraying a load of gravel down. That's going to make it interesting. 
but we've just seen 62 Matt Nichol Jones go through the way and you touched on it earlier the way that the safety car has come out picked up the overall race leader and its track position relative to everybody else in GT4 it means that Matt Nichol Jones is going to be a lap up on everybody else he's going to be the last car in the queue but the next GT4 car is behind the race leader in other words a lap down so Matt Nichol Jones has stayed on the lead lap everybody else in GT4 is a lap behind because of the, the positioning of the overall race leader and the safety car we are told is in this lap yeah so that takes the stress off matt nickel jones for that gt4 win he just needs to stroke it home team would have told him that as we go to james cotton who looks quite relaxed that was a fake smile wasn't it though uh, <laughs> so he's just got to watch his man johnny adam here look at him back him up got to back him up back him up all the way i think if he can slow it down a touch more he's probably going to go when i mean go he's going to drop the hammer just before the break zone into the last corner and that gt4 mclaren just won't be able to stick with him and that naturally will hold up gun look how slow they're going gun knows what's happening the gt4 mclaren will want to get going as quickly as he can but his day's done almost he's not going to get that lap back and we see johnny adam go just before the breaking point at lodge and that gt4 is going to hold gun all the way up to the start line and it's an agonizingly long time now for ross gun until he can overtake johnny adam comes across the line in now and that is when gun can come past just about now that is an amazing restart by johnny adam it is and it's given him two and a half seconds then as up into third has just jumped dan harper and also marcus Klassen has got ahead of jules gunon as well so they were doing that coming out of dear Leap. now that might have just been before the line that i suspect might get looked at because there was traffic again and jules gunon has lost two places and uh, under normal circumstances jules gunon does not lose ground he's working his way past gt4 traffic that's Klassen ahead of him so now Ross Gunn, who did that fastest lap of the race early on, remember, hunting down uh, Johnny Adam. He's a loaded gun now, isn't he, then, Ross, to try and catch up to the yellow Mercedes up front. Johnny Adam has had 16 uh, race wins in British GT. His co-driver, James Cottingham, has never had a victory. That could change in the next 18 minutes. Yeah, looks likely. I, I think Harper's done for here. He was in front of Gunon on the line. There's yeah. no way he's not going to get done. Clutton, though, was still behind Gunon on the line, so I think his was legit. I assume Gunon's got checked up by a GT4 car and has had to break or slow down anyway over the line. Even though that's happened, it's still Harper's responsibility as we see Frogger go across the grass there. And they've also just got a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So it's amazing how quickly your day unravels as we're watching it. Um, and we're seeing 88 uh, having the penalty as well. And that's both Garage 59 cars. And I just, they're a top, top team. And I can, my first reaction is that timing I was talking about that the teams use. If one of those coordinates is set wrong, then it all unravels from that. But that is super rare for a team of Garage 59's level to attract such a simple penalty. Yeah, it's not pit stop time, it's speeding, isn't it, for both cars. So over the timing line, Dan Harper, fastest lap of the race, just set as he hunts down Ross Gunn. The lead gap has gone up, in fact. Johnny Adam now 2.6 seconds clear. So it could well be that it's all eyes on second place rather than for the race lead. And in fourth, Marcus Clutton, their fifth, Jules Gounon, in a Mercedes that does not look anything like as racy as the leading car, but whatever they've done on the setup, and perhaps that was a compromise to, oh, another McLaren has stopped from GT4, but a compromise as to a wet or a dry setup or a halfway house, it ain't working. Exactly, and when, when it is wet, the team will soften the car off. Big slide from Harper there. He is getting this thing absolutely lit up. Okay. I think Beach Dean here will actually be in race control themselves, trying to get Harper a penalty, because they will not want Harper to overtake Gun and then potentially get a penalty, as we see that Enduro McLaren GT4. Doesn't look like it's crashed, looks like it pulled over. I can see the tire marks just on it that is really borderline whether that's in a safe enough place to leave under local yellows for now i think it is personally but i wouldn't be surprised if peter daly does call a safety car but that bmw even with the bop hit after qualifying it is on it isn't it harper really is hanging that out i think he's got pace wise and that hit was an extra 10 kilos uh, arguably in the wet it makes less difference but right now dan harper is illustrating just how good he is exactly what we saw in Fanatec GT or in the NLS or indeed going back to his Porsche Carrera Cup days he's one of many on this grid a graduate of the Ginetta junior scene so the race leader Johnny Adam puts 21 laps in the book 15 and a half minutes to go but the gap's coming down 2.2 seconds now he's being caught by Gunn and Gunn is being caught by Harper who's done another fastest lap of the race he's absolutely flying and I think Ross Gunn has really got to up it now I thought he was going to be challenging Adam quicker than this for the lead but maybe Adams just managed to eke out to see what's going 
it's still an interesting one about Goon on what has happened at the restart. I think we've got a replay coming up. Let's try and decide what happened. I can only assume. So on board. So we've got the 570 Brit McLaren in front. So he can't pass. He's waiting. He's got the run. He's got the run. He's, he's had a break. Um, yeah. It's a bit controversial, and I respect Jewel massively. I feel like he was worried that he was going to get jumped anyway, and he's tried to bring Harper past him to get him the penalty. That is a massive, massive shout, and I'm only happy to make it because I've done it myself, and it's properly underhand, but all is fair in love and war in British GT. <sighs> It's still a penalty, though. I don't see how it's not a penalty for the BMW. Well, yeah. He was in front of him he on the, the line on yeah. the restart. Yeah. That's However, the rule. He got there. It's black and white. There isn't, yeah. but if maybe, that's going to be a really, really hard decision. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to speak to Jules after the race and just ask him openly what happened there because he definitely jumped the brake yeah. where it looked like he had enough space to that 570 in front of him to overtake in a normal manner. As yet, though, there is no investigation about that. So despite the replays, despite what we have seen, what the timing screen has shown, because at the end of each lap, it will show if somebody has gained or lost a position. Uh, nobody seems to have shouted about it yet, but they could do soon because here comes Dan Harper, another fastest lap of the race. Each one gets quicker as off the racetrack there. Look, goes the Century GT4 BMW of Chris Sulkeld. But Dan Harper then now, 134.5. So two seconds cover the top three cars. That second, the Aston of Ross Gunn, Third, Dan Harper in the BMW behind him, and the race leader, Johnny Adam, hangs on to the advantage. The clock ticks down. He only has to win by a thousandth of a second as long as he wins. So even if they catch him, it's not going to be easy to get past. Three different brands in the top three here. Yeah, that Salkeld off was interesting. They're a leading Pro-Am GT4, so I think that's why he went to the left of those barriers right. to try and not lose as much time going through the Nickerbrook shortcut. This is also going to be interesting. I think they're just going to catch the GT4s at the end of the race. So obviously the safety car bunched them all back up. So they've had these free laps. So we've all been relaxed and enjoying life. But I think it's going to get real spicy with my really poor math. We're going to have a lap and a half of GT4s intermingling with these GT3s. And again, they're in the wrong order, right? Harper's got the best pace, gun second, and then Adam is getting caught. So I love it when they're the wrong way around because all of those drivers want to prove why they should be the one at the front of that pack. Cruel, really, at heart, aren't you? Uh, Johnny Adam then into Druids, and you can see how that gap is coming down. Ross Gunn, absolute best in the first sector, and quicker than all of them in the second sector has been Dan Harper. Good battle going on in GT4 here because number 18 Porsche, uh, Dan Vaughan, the 2020 champion when he was a TF Sport Aston driver, coming under attack. Number 90 McLaren, the pole car, 19th overall, and is currently what? Third in GT4, comes down now into his lops. So actually, it's a, a Academy Motorsport 1 2, isn't it? Both the Mustangs there are first and second after starting from the pits and getting the tyre choice right and pitting at the right time. Yeah, we kind of thought that might be the case of 1 2. The 62 got the whole lap advantage as we see that Mercedes and GT4 McLaren super tight coming up the hill. He's getting held up. That Merc is a lap down, so technically should be kind of helping to get out of the way. Relatively big damage on that splitter that we said about. Huge slide there. Oh, that made me nervous with that McLaren marks just parked on the side sorry there's no yellow now so technically they don't need to slow down there's a caution point but that is it safety car restart car 91 under investigation that is dan harper so that's what we've been banging on about it has now come up it's under investigation and also being looked at is the simon orange now michael o'brien uh, mclaren but the significant one is the car that's in third place and when things are under investigation like that, there's normally only one outcome. Yeah, you're guilty. And I've got a real smug feeling. I feel like I've dobbed him <laughs> in. I can see why everyone did it to me at school now. I feel like really uh, warm inside. But super unfortunate. I, I really sympathise with Harper. I actually don't think he did a huge amount wrong there. Like I said, Gunon slowed it down. And Harper probably couldn't react. Slash maybe if Clutton was on his rear, maybe didn't even want to break to cause an incident in that fashion. So it is super, super unlucky. And let's just see what the penalty is. Ross Gunn should be informed by... Beach Dean, his team, that there's a penalty probably looming for that BMW. So the drive through has been confirmed. So that's going to drop them down about 18 seconds. So, in my quick math, he's going to probably just be inside the top 10. So, Jules Gounon gets one of those two lost places back. The fact that, though, another car jumped him, not only the BMW, makes me think that it wasn't a deliberate check up. It was more of a, of a oh, that was a bit close as the, as the GT4 car was in the way type of check up but we'll go and ask him post-race. So what that now gives us in real terms is Johnny Adam one second ahead of Ross Gunn. 
So, uh, as an Aston Martin driver, think of Le Mans. Johnny was uh, a star at doing the fighting and catching and then winning. Here he's going to have to defend because Ross Gunn is closing, closing with 10 minutes to go of what has been, as we expected, a fantastic start to the season. We've had everything. Been absolutely action packed across both classes as well. We go on board with the GT4 McLaren of DTO. Josh Rowledge into the last corner. You can see we've got a great battle in front. That is that optimum car in front that started. So it's always interesting to see the same car as you. Where's their strength? Because that's purely on setup. Optimum Motorsport, that car in front, have really got on top of that car. And to be a second clear in qualifying was obviously evidence of that. But at the moment, he's being held up by that Mercedes and can't get to the second place Mustang. He's kind of got a rear gunner working for him there. We go down the hill into Cascade, really cambered here. Look through the corner, look where that Mustang is. Gives you an idea of how cambered that corner is. Release the lock and off we go again. Looks like DTO just haven't quite got the rear end grip by that. We're just a little slow to get on the throttle and on all of the exits, we're just losing a little bit to those cars in front. Again, it could just be that they went more of a wet setup, a bit softer on that rear, it's inducing a bit of understeer. There's an infinite amount of excuses as there's a load of grass on the inside there. Drivers starting to cut the corner more and more. Drivers are such cheats, aren't they? Wherever they can get away with a track limit, they will use it. And it feels like that one isn't being maybe police as the other. Through the first chicane, using so much curve. Back in my day, I feel like an old man. We used to have a tire stack there. They used to stop us doing that. I used to move it back a bit after hitting it a bit. But we've seen the windscreen wipers back on yeah. as well. I wonder if we're going to get a bit spicy here. And a stop and go penalty for number 36. That is now uh, Josh Rowledge. And that is for stopping outside of the window, we understand. So the DTO. Uh, squad DTO Motorsport that runs that Artura are uh, gonna have to have a stop go and indeed the rain is coming again you saw the wipers on so they're all on slicks the rain is coming eight and a half minutes to go you couldn't make this up could you this is a typical British bank holiday miserable weather and the teams hating every minute of it we've been given 24 hour race distance weather in the first 40 minutes of it it's that is really heavy. Wet, yeah and we've seen in the past years of Alton Park this is where the rain hits first and it will sweep across the track these guys are gonna have to really really yeah. start earning their money in the next eight minutes Dan Harper hasn't yet taken his drive through either so he's still running in a phony third as Johnny Adam hangs on in there so he'll have to check his pace now of course he'll be on the radio potentially saying to the team well we should be stopping the race now you know it's, it's dangerous but race controls argument would be you have the option to drive within the speed of the conditions you have the option to change tires if you think you need so it's down to the teams for the moment to make the right call but it's going to get slower in terms of lap time here comes the drive through then for dan harper and he comes down the pit lane he comes did well to get it stopped there. Do you see how slippy it was under braking for the yeah. pit lane? It's really coming down quickly. A drive through also, Joe, for Ross Gunn. Wow. So, a I, drive through Again, I'm going to be that smug guy that dobs everyone in. I think that's from the pit stop potentially pushing back and holding Maybe. and blocking the two C cars in. So, suddenly, Jules Gunon, sorry, has lost those two places, but has just been given essentially them back and it's going to get him back on the podium. This has been a fast and frenetic race. Ross Gunn has only got three laps to serve this penalty. And the happiest man in the whole of chess year will be Johnny Adam as he yeah. sees that Aston go into pit lane. Here's the GT4s that I knew we were going to catch at an awkward point, and they've proven that to be the case. Well, Beach Dean are asking why they've got the drive through because it's not been confirmed to them yet. So, right now, Ross Gunn, until he's told otherwise, will push, push, push. And he's got three laps, and I think the weather going, what car would I want to be in? And at the moment, I'd want to be in one of these Mercedes. Why? Front engine, so you get a real good feel of the front axle, the grip, the weight that's linked with that engine placement, but also no turbo, so the linear power delivery of that big V8 is so smooth. The turbo cars have a similar power, similar torque, but the way it's delivered as the turbo spools up just naturally makes it a little bit snappier. Yes, you've got traction control, but again, it just makes it harder to work. And Johnny Adam naturally is so smooth anyway. Uh, Clutton behind him now, essentially on the road, has got a lot of work to do. Gunon there as well. And then really Gunon's got a huge gap behind him, 11 seconds to another Mercedes of Callum McLeod. So yeah, surprisingly it's opened up quite quickly, but this rain is coming down hard. Uh, I would put some good money on a safety car being having to be called, sorry, in the next lap and a half. It was a typing error oh, for 97. Like there was no penalty, so uh, panic over. Uh, so correction, it says on the screen, 97, no penalty. Whoever the penalty was for, it's not 97. So these things can happen, but that's given Beach Dean uh, a few palpitations but of course it's a good job that they queried it because had they just called the car in uh, it would have cost them the race so it's one of those instances where human error i'm afraid could have spelled disaster for a team thankfully it hasn't but uh, 
few much mopping of brow. What it also gives us is the continuation of the lead battle. We have got five minutes and seven tenths of a second. And it's getting tight, isn't it? We saw them both get held up by GT4s. See the Ginetta in front of Johnny Adam. He's probably going to catch up right on the exit of this first chicane. So it's going to be hard for him not to get balked. And that's going to bring Ross Gunn right on the rear bumper. It's going to be really difficult. And then there's another car. I just missed which GT4 it was coming over the hill. Another McLaren. And again, that's going to be right in the brake zone of here. And then they're held behind it. Ross Gunn is on the attack, isn't he? Yeah. Look at Clutton as well, taking chunks out of them. Being slightly lucky with traffic, potentially around the oh, outside oh, oh, oh. is a long way. Don't do that. And then he's going to get it back over, but the rain there is so heavy. Clutton's on the back of him. Look at that lunge. Clutton is on it. He is indeed, and it's not going to be long before he gets up with Ross Gunn. That might be Johnny Adams' best chance here if they start squabbling for second, but Ross Gunn wants to lead by the end of the lap. He is pushing, pushing, pushing Johnny Adam down on a damp circuit, goes through on the inside of the McLaren. But Ross Gunn's car looking the quicker, but Clutton could yet win this race. He's right there in third place. Down they come under the vehicle bridge. Four minutes and change on the clock. Johnny Adam Mercedes leads the way. Ross Gunn second, trying to attack, trying to defend. He goes to the outside line. Clutton. Door opens. Clutton up the inside line. He goes second. Job done. Out of dear lead then. And Marcus Clutton takes second place. And he's about to go for the race lead, isn't he? We've got four minutes on the clock. They dive down towards Old Hall Corner. I can't see, with all due deference to Johnny Adam, him being able to repel the McLaren. Clutton is absolutely flying, and that car's really come out of nowhere. Yeah, he is on it. He's wicked around here anyway, Marcus Clutton, yeah. but he's so aggressive. Ross Gunn was all eyes forward, worrying about getting Johnny Adam, and Clutton set him up perfectly. Two things I like. Clutton doesn't have his windscreen wiper, doesn't have his rain light on. He's telling himself it's drier than it is. The other two around him are really worried about what the conditions. Clutton can just sit behind Adam. How much grip have you got, mate? Then I can either add a percent, take a percent away. This is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm trying to work out how they're going to get through these next letter of GT4s. But also now, Clutton hasn't got past Adam. Ross Gunn's not going away. And for Johnny Adam, his heart must sink. Yeah, this wave of traffic. What is it? Seven more cars up the road. They're also being caught by Jules Gounon in fourth. Raffaele Marciano is fifth now. So one back marker, two, three, four five six here comes the leader johnny adam on the inside line there's nowhere for marcus clutton to dive bomb him there because the top three all go through the traffic where's gunon relative to all of this there he is in the background the next of the mercedes oh, it is very very tight as far as the race lead is concerned it's three for the lead right now johnny adam picks his way past the team parker racing porsche heading up clay hill this is lap 29 we've got two and three quarter minutes to go and yes, they're on it, but Johnny Adams' last lap was 10 seconds slower than his best lap. Shows you conditions, traffic, having to defend. There's a huge amount of factors going on here. Johnny Adam, coolest man in the paddock, but he will be feeling the heat. Look at Clutton tucked up. You could barely see him, he was that tight. Another GT4 McLaren going back to the racing line. Clutton's going to be compromised a little bit there. Johnny Adam can breathe. Can Johnny Adam get past both of those cars in front of him before turn one? Two laps to go. We've got enough time for two more laps. They come over the line. So Johnny Adam goes through. He wants a back marker between himself and the opposition turning into Old Hall Corner, which is what he gets now. Back wags, but Johnny Adam can just try to edge away ever so slightly. Marshall's busy with the blue flags. Marcus Clattons, McLaren is second. It dives to the inside line. One more lap to run at the end of this. Third look is the Aston of Ross Gunn. That's now been compromised. Where is Jules Gounon? One back marker, two back markers, three, because Gounon is out wide. He there, trying to go around the outside in the traffic, has just made a tiny mistake, found a wetter part of the road and cost himself some time. Amazing. Clotten got a little unlucky, didn't he, with the traffic there? And that's, whoa, oh, oh, huge side. Oh. Look at the rain that's coming in from this end of the track. These guys have got to get their eyes up. Got to realise uh, Callum McLeod off in the gravel. Can we finish this lap, please, without a safety car? I know we've got one more, but I think that's going to have to be a safety car. Clutton's got the pace as well. This is so slippy. You can see the tyre marks now being left, yeah. and that's the water being pushed under the slick tyre. They are so slow. They're tiptoeing around this Alton Park circuit. If the race were to finish under a safety car, the order would be the order. If it were to be red flagged, it would go back a lap, which would preserve Johnny Adams' lead, wouldn't it? So that's potentially now what he would quite like, given the car off the road. He's good into his lops. Has he got away by another length or so? He has, and I reckon that Gunn is coming back at Clutton. The two of them together as they are so, so patient with the throttle there. Just hover your right foot over a pedal and hope something happens. So they've got to be so careful. But look, Johnny Adam has got away through that really treacherous part of his lops and Nicker Brook, and it's a bigger gap coming into Druids. There is time for one more lap as a very nervous Morgan Tilbrook you just saw there who can barely watch his car is in second place now yes they all want to win but surely there's an element of bank some points there is another race to go later on in the day maybe the heroics could come there and if anything Ross Gunn is coming back at Marcus Clutton isn't it yes you were right earlier on about how brave and how heroic Clutton was 
but he can't maintain that pace now. He's going to be lucky with a lap to go to hang on to second. Here I, comes Gum. Yeah, I think that, oh, he's got a huge run on down the inside. Exactly the same move as Andrew Howard, only one car, Ross Gunn, so you need to work a bit harder. But that McLaren, look at it squirm. It's way too stiff for these conditions. Yellow flag for Callum McLeod's car in the gravel. Looked like the camera swung around. I don't know if it's happened at turn one there. Car running wide. Yeah, yeah the Brown's optimum, gone. no, those guys were doing so well. It's going to be really difficult for him to rejoin as well as there's a lot of cars coming through. The mirror's in as well, so he's made yeah. a bit of contact with the barrier, I'd say. Charles Clark at the wheel of it. Right, that's your race leader, Johnny Adam. He was a second and a half ahead starting this lap as he goes for a 17th GT3 win in the British Championship. And that man, James Cottingham, is on for his first in the championship. But for second, it's Ross Gunn ahead of Clutton, who fights back on the inside line. Aston Martin versus McLaren on the outside grippier line. It pays out for Ross Gunn. And now it is absolutely horrible. Everybody on this part of the circuit now wetter than a mermaid's flannel because it is absolutely teeming down. And Gunon's back with them. Gunon's got it, I think. He's got so much pace. You see how much he's caught up in that last lap. Took two and a half seconds out of Clutton. And again, it's gone back to a little bit dry. You actually saw some spray at that first chicane. Morgan Tilbrook's just going, I'm glad I started the race. Well, and I'm not yeah. out now, I think. But look at Gunn. He's brought the gap down to Johnny Adam then. So Johnny, the race leader, with all of those years of experience, all of those titles under his belt, Jules Gounon, rally style, flinging the car through his lots. They're all on slicks, remember. And the road is very definitely not conducive to dry weather tyres. For the race lead, two corners to go. Ross Gunn quicker than Johnny Adam, but is he going to be a hero in the last corner or is he going to bank the points for the team? Let's see. There's one more corner. There's one more chance to send it up the inside. Ross Gunn has not given up yet. Goes to the inside, goes to the outside. He's almost level with the Mercedes on the outside line, but he can't get the car slowed down in time. They're both deep into the corner. Johnny Adam runs wide. Where is Clutton? He's not there yet. He arrives on the scene now, but not in time to prevent Johnny Adam from taking the race win. It's going to be the Mercedes that wins. Johnny Adam wins at Alton Park. Second over the line is Ross Gunn. Four tenths between the Marcus Clutton third, and he was 29 thousandths ahead of Jules Gounon. What a last corner, what a race, and a first British GT Championship win for James Cottingham. A 17th for Johnny Adam. What a way to start the season. Oh my God, we're not going to get better now. That's my main thought. That was insane. Ross Gunn threw everything at that last corner. Complete correct. Locked the rears under braking. I thought he was going off. I thought Johnny yeah. Adam looked all right. Then as he crossed the race, I was still battling all the way through Kershaw for coming into the last corner. It's like gone dark. It's midday here. It looks like it's going to sun setting. It was incredible. Johnny Adam did such a good job as we yeah. see the GT4 leader by a lap. That's boring now, isn't it? I'm, I'm done with that. Well done, Matt Nicol <laughs> Jones. You, you made that boring for us. So at least it gave us something else to talk about on that front. But honestly, Johnny Adam there, I think if he went across the racing line, it just locked up and put yeah. him in so deep. It was like a block pass, like speedway bikes. He hung him up to the wall. And I think if Ross Gunn could have cut back a foot earlier, he could have got him, but they both awkwardly parked there. And again, it showed you how much time Clutton had lost in sector yeah, three. Yeah. If he was a second closer, he would have won that race almost by luck more than that. Look at the rain, it is teeming down. We've had four seasons in one one hour race. Um, absolutely in love with this championship what a race absolutely fantastic and i know we had a couple of safety car periods but we didn't have carnage did we i mean it was okay a couple of cars in the gravel but actually the two that we lost were pretty much undamaged uh, one or two mechanical dramas but you know we haven't had bad driving at all we haven't had silly moves we've seen the ams and the pros driving very very intelligently no pun with the championship sponsor intended, the Intelligent Money British GT Championship, but it has all worked out to give us a fantastic race. The top four covered by 1.3 seconds, and although the order didn't shuffle at the last corner, it very nearly did. So James Cottingham, well done, a maiden British GT Championship win, and Johnny Adam, doesn't matter whether you plug him into an Aston or a Mercedes, he can deliver, makes a change for Johnny defending from an Aston rather than attacking in one. What a race incredible and if you're sat at home and you haven't been fortunate enough to come to a racetrack these guys hustling in those conditions they were right on the limit and that last corner absolutely showed that there was nothing left there there was so much risk they're forgetting that there's a whole championship to go when there's a race win on the table you take it with both hands and you throw a knee into the fight as well to try and steal it from someone but that was absolutely top draw by everyone and um, we've got another one this afternoon well i was just thinking that yeah what's uh, race two going to throw at us johnny adam and james cottingham then take the win from andrew howard and ross gunn uh, marcus Classon and morgan tilbrook take third fourth jules gounon and ian loggy rafael marciello and john ferguson fifth remember how much time they lost early on on the wrong choice or the, the, the at the time incorrect choice of tire but fifth in the end sixth after the drive-through dan harper and daryl uh, lund seventh rob bell and Mark Radcliffe, 
in eighth place it was uh, Ewan Hankey and Lucky Carer. Ninth, another of those that started from the pits, Martin Plowman's car, uh, which he was sharing with Mark Smith in the top 10 rounded out by uh, number 42 of the race lab, James Kell and Ian Campbell McLaren that flew under the radar race long. Well done, Johnny Adam who thinks, I don't know what all the fuss is about. He's like this all the time up in Scotland. This is this is a summer's day, but he's done a great job in the two C's Mercedes. Uh, there is a very happy James Cottingham, a first time winner in the championship. Well done, James, who's always been quick when he came into uh, British GT racing, but he'll be a delighted race winner now. There they are. And uh, Johnny Adam with the helmet on, James Cottingham next to him. And uh, Bryn Lucas is down there to speak. No doubt Bryn to a delighted duo after a great race at Alton. Well, I'll tell you what, we positioned ourselves right in the middle of a big puddle here, but James, you won't mind about that one, your first ever win in British GT. This one had it all. It was a season's worth of racing in one lap at the end, it seems. Yeah, I mean, we've had everything, haven't we? It's like two, three safety cars and wet, dry, wet, dry. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the last three laps as well, just so tense in the garage. And I didn't think it was going to get that tense at the end and right down to the last corner. But I'm so happy for Johnny to win his 100th British GT race with me and my first. So, yeah. I mean, that's right, a hundredth race as you started this one, and now you've got your 17th win. It's not bad. Those stats aren't bad at all, are they, Johnny? That was probably the hardest win of them all. Uh, the weather was changing so much at the end. And because it's a new car, I'm trying to find where the wiper is, where the buttons were throughout the stint. But a uh, top job by the team. James has been superb all weekend. To qualify in pole made it easier for us. But a uh, great way to start the championship and super happy to get a win on the hundredth race. And of course, as well, for us, lot, we have three different manufacturers, three very different sorts of cars racing toe to toe. Yeah, you can see the strengths and weaknesses even in the wet of both cars, so uh, out of all three cars. But it's always cool some British GT, but yeah, super way to start the year. Congratulations, both of you. Well done, well done. And let's see if I can grab the winner in GT4 uh, as well. Let's run over here as well. You can see big round of applause from, from Matt Nickel Jones there taking the plaudits for this one. But next to him as well, Will Moore. Well, Will, we've seen you racing here a fair bit over the years and you know, some good results and bad results over the time. That one had it all. Oh, it did, yeah. I mean, starting from the pit lane, dead last of the GT4 pack to be, uh, to be leading after six laps is, um, yeah, it was good fun out there, to say the least. Now, what about when the GT3 cars are going past you? I mean, they, they fly at you, don't they, round here? Oh, they do, yeah. I mean, uh, they've just got to have a little bit more respect, especially in the wet. But, um, yeah, at the start of the race, we were, we were struggling with slower GT3 cars. We were actually passing a few of them who were, you know, on the wet tyre when it sh should have been the slick, really. But um, it's interesting. <laughs> and then, interesting yourself now, Matt, as well. And big congratulations for you. I mean, you've, you won the title a long time ago now, but you've won the title here before. Team owner, too. It must be nice to be a part of this one behind the wheel. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> I genuinely just had to not fall <laughs> off. Um, this boy did everything at the start, and uh, the, the team um, absolutely nailed it. I mean, we had a little idea what we might do, so starting from the pit lane was definitely the right move. Cheeky devils, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Let's have a look at the results then of the opening round of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. Well done, Johnny Adam in his 100th race, a 17th win, and James Cottingham takes a maiden victory in the championship. Ross Gunn and Andrew Howard, second, four tenths of a second back, ahead of Morgan Tilbrook and Marcus Clutton. Ian Loggy fourth with Jules Gounon, ahead of John Ferguson and Raffaele Marcello. Then Dan Harper and Darren Lung, with Mark Radcliffe and Rob Bell, seventh. Eighth, Ewan Hankey and Lucky Kera. Ninth, Mark Smith and Martin Plowman from Ian Campbell and James Kell, uh, running out the top ten. The top 15, all GT3 entries. You've got to go a little bit further back, of course, until you find the winning GT4 entry, and that's the Academy Motorsport Grand Ford Mustang. If you've just been hearing from the drivers, Will Moore and Matt Nicol Jones after starting from the pits, and they eventually were a lap up over Eric Evans and Matt Cowley in the sister car. And then third, uh, Tom Holland and Michael Kreese in the Janetta from Lewis Plato and Carl Cavers. Uh, and uh, Michael Kreese and Tom Holland, just to make the point, also the GT4 Pro Am winners. In the end, Dan Vaughan and Zach Meekins Porsche fell down the order somewhat. Uh, and others, of course, that had penalties of various descriptions, whether they were drive through or uh, stop go, dropping down the order as well. One or two cars still being retrieved around the circuit. The teams will be hard at work, ready for the second Intelligent Money British GT race of the day at Alton Park. That is due to start at 10 minutes to four, barring any other dramas in support races on a now rather treacherous track once again. But a superb way to kickstart the season. Great racing. and. Uh, there's more to come, as I say, in just a few hours' time here. So the drivers will be making their way shortly to the podium. Of course, first of all, there are celebrations 
amongst the teams. Then there's conversations from engineers and drivers, and then eventually uh, they think, oh, yes, I need to go to the podium now and sort of trot off towards the uh, podium and the presentation area. So, Joe, what have we learned after all of that? Seemingly, the Mercedes remains the car to have. Yeah, definitely, although the BOP, you'd have to say, was so tight. Yeah. Depending on the conditions, the team, the driver, it looked like at any point there was probably eight or nine different fastest drivers on the track. So I think we're in a really, really strong place, and that's across the board for GT3 and for GT4. I think the standard of driving that we've been going on and on about pre-season is so high. We're going to be blessed with a lot of good racing, be it the AMs, be it the pros, or even the silver-silver combinations in GT4 and I think we again we're just so lucky to have 36 cars they're so close we're always going to have battles like that in my opinion here's the last corner again Ross Gunn just about got his nose in front both of them braked as late as they dared slithered out wide and Marcus Klassen just wasn't quite close enough because he was busy defending from Gunnar. He couldn't capitalise. Yeah, you could see that McLaren even struggling there to get the traction down. You think he had quite a big relative gap to Gunnar out that last corner, but yeah, it was two hundredths by the line. And I think that car was just better suited to those dry conditions, which we saw Clutton being the guy on the front foot. He was the attacker, the aggressor. And as soon as he went back to wet again, suddenly he went to the back foot. And again, that's just the nuances of how the team have decided that's where the car should be for those particular conditions in the race we're going to have. I mean, even if you compare and contrast the two two C's Mercedes, because the Cottingham Adam entry, dare one say, always looked the slightly stronger throughout the race. Didn't matter whether it was Ian Loggy or Jules or Gounon in the car it never seems to be quite as good as the yellow one, the sister car. Yeah, definitely, and it's sometimes a bit easier when you're the lead car, because you've got the space, you can do what you want, but I would agree with you, it's it better in the dry, better in the wet, and I think Loggy and Gunon were always going to be near the top for our favourites for the championship, but now, after this first race, I think Adam and Cottingham are going to be able to walk around that two C's garage with those teammates pretty, pretty happy, as we see Andrew Howard there, for me, with move of the race, oh, by the absolutely. way, that was yes. incredible. Although he did just break check Morgan Tilbrook, I think, there on the podium. <laughs> but no, really, really good driving by all of these yeah. six drivers on the podium. And I feel it was the right result, the fair result. I think the drivers that did the best job probably was Cottingham in stint one. And then by the overall of it, Johnny Adam in that second stint. Well, there are the trophies to the third place drivers in the white overalls, Morgan Tilbrook and Marcus Klassen. At the other end of the podium, Andrew Howard, who now congratulates his regular previous co-driver, Johnny Adam, in that 100th race then, who uh, goes to the top step of the podium. Andrew Howard and Ross Gunn for second. But Johnny Adam and James Cottingham, who in GT terms at least stands on a podium on the top step. For the first time, he's had lots of historic racing success, but a first what you might call modern motor racing victory for James Cottingham. Victory at Alton Park in the Intelligent Money British GT Championship with Johnny Adam celebrating his 100th British GT race and a win. They've obviously got too much budget because they must have spare suits to spray the champagne <laughs> with a second race coming later. Let's see if any of them drink it and we can breathalyze them afterwards. But uh, no, it's really good and it's always interesting to start the season. The handshakes are quite meaningful. Yeah. And then as the tensions build over the season, you'll notice a driver or two doesn't offer a hand and you just go, I wonder what your problem was. Just because I overtook you fairly, in my opinion. Yes, I might have put you in the gravel trap. But you start to get those dynamics starting to build as the season goes on. And I think, uh, I think those first three that we've seen there are going to be right up there. I have to say I was impressed with Andrew Howard's pace overall. We've seen him win championships over the year, but the last year or two not quite be as competitive as he's shown he was in race one there. And GT4, although the results would suggest that it was an absolute walkover for Academy Motorsport, uh, it was uh, still a very, very good battle. So now we have the GT3 classes making their way to the podium because, of course, there are uh, pro-ams and silver-ams within there. And as the other podiums take place, let's have a look at the highlights of a great race. So it began on a damp but drying road with James Cottingham from pole position kicking up spray, storming into the race lead on the way down towards the first corner into Old Hall, swinging their way through that right-hander, and a good getaway by Richard Neary put him up into third behind Ian Loggy, who was also quick out of the blocks. Drama at the end of the lap, though, as Morgan Tilbrook went off the road. The fact that that car was able to recover for third place, mighty impressive in a race of changing fortunes, as Kevin Say grabbed a place away from the Neary's Mercedes coming out of Deer Lee. Move of the race, Andrew Howard, not one, but two places gained on the inside going into Old Hall Corner. That was quite something. And when the pit window opened, inevitably, the Ams came in first in GT3. And the tyre choice was absolutely crucial going into the remainder of the race. 
Richard Neary's car, however, was not to survive for much longer because it was edged up towards the grass coming up Water Tower, and it was a big, big drama that eventually saw the car head into the gravel at Druids and triggered a safety car. And Sam Neary, lucky not to take anybody with him. Tried to dig the car out. He had the momentum, but as the back came round, it ended up beached. And Jules Grunon overtaken on the restart after the safety car by Dan Harper, for which the BMW popped a penalty. More battles raged on as Marcus Klasser moved himself up and passed Ross Gunn. That put him second, but as the rain came back, so the McLaren fell away once more from the Aston Martin. But Johnny Adam led all the way as the battle was on for second place. So out at Old Hall Corner came the Aston. And at the last corner of the last lap, Ross Gunn made his move on the outside for the race lead, but it was not to be couldn't quite do it. Johnny Adam and James Cottingham win round one of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship.